Okay. Hello, uh, we are here with Mason. Uh, hi Mason, how are you? Uh, how, have we, how, how have you been up to lately? What have you been up to? I'm doing pretty well. Um, I just got back from a ski trip with the school in Slovakia. It was really fun. I got to hang out with some of the first year students and learn a little bit more about themselves. And where are you skiing to? We were at Velka Racha, near the border of Poland. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and how would you describe your stay here in our country? Uh, the stay has been very enjoyable. I've met a lot of new people. I uh, got into a lot of new hobbies. Floorball is one that I do every Wednesday. And it's been a really great time. I'm glad I was able to do it. Uh, are you playing uh, floorball like uh, most of the time? Or are you new to it? It's brand new. I never knew about the sport before I came here. And every Wednesday for the past two or three months I've been playing. But I also do other things here. I do a lot of hiking as well. And then, oh. yeah, visit some different places. Any other sport? Uh, not any other sports. I used to play American football, but I stopped doing that. Yeah, that's nice. So, if I can say some personal questions. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have a sister and brothers. Uh, are they like you, traveling about exploring new countries? Uh, somewhat. My youngest brother and youngest sister, they're still in high school, so they haven't had much of a chance to travel. My oldest brother, he's traveled quite a lot. One semester he spent on a school, on a boat, so we went to a lot of different countries. And then my other brother Mitchell, he's in the military and he tries to get abroad, but it's much harder for him. Uh, just last year, for about five months, he was in Ghana. So are you like uh, following him in his treks, or one of your older, older brothers? Um, in my family I've traveled the most. Okay. Yeah, so I started exploring a little bit before and then they started doing it afterwards. Yeah, that's nice. Tell me, before you came here, you were planning to stay in the Czech Republic for over a year. Did you get an approval from your parents? I mean, were they okay with the thing uh, they might not see you for such a long time? <laughs> uh, I don't think I really need approval from my parents for that. Um, at this point, I'm over the age of 18, so I'm kind of on my own. But I've been abroad before. So just two or three years ago, I lived in Northern Ireland for five months. So when I told them I was going to live abroad for 10 months, they weren't so surprised. I've done it. I just kind of leave randomly and then come back. That's nice. And why did you choose the Czech Republic in the first place? So my grandfather, my mom's father, uh, he has strong roots in the Czech Republic. His parents are actually straight from the Czech Republic. He was the first born in the US. That's nice. Uh, and uh, have you had a chance to see or be in contact with your family in Slovakia? Yeah, I emailed my mom's first cousin a little bit, and in about four weeks in April, when my mom comes to visit, her cousins are coming to visit us here in Prague. So I'll get to meet with them and speak with them more then. Um, since you have ancestors from here, have you considered starting learning the language, either Czech or Slovakian, during the time here? Yeah, uh, my intention was when I first came here, I told myself I was going to study a lot. I was like, okay, check, this is the time to learn it, I should be able to speak, my grandfather would really appreciate it. But uh, since being here, I've noticed a lot more people want to learn English, and they're more interested in, in speaking in English, which is fine by me. I consider it like part of my job and duty of being here, is to make sure I can tell people more about America and teach more English. So for me, I guess Czech has kind of taken something in the back. I try to listen to it and pay attention, but I'm not actively learning. So, what do you think about the language? Is it hard or uh, you think you could handle it if you uh, give more time to it? I, I truly believe if I put a lot of effort in anything, I could do it. But the language is definitely more difficult than normal. Um, I studied a little bit of French in school and it was very easy for me. It was, the letters were the same, the sounds weren't too much different. Uh -huh. But in Czech, there's a lot more sounds. So, yes, yes. if you try to make one noise, you have to combine it with the second noise. And if the first noise, the R, is already difficult <laughs> yeah. enough for me, yeah, yeah. I can't do anything more. Yeah, yeah. So I get really tongue-tied. If, if, do you think it's, uh, the, Czech, uh, the Czech language is more uh, hard than the English? That's a hard question to answer, since I've only known English my entire life and I started learning it. But from conversations I've had with other people, other non-natives and some Czech people as well, I, they've told me the language is very difficult and they find English easier for them. So I think 
for myself, I also find English to be easier, but I wouldn't know for sure. For me, for me it's too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I can pass it to the Philip. Thank you, Thomas. So, Mason, I would like to ask uh, some questions in regards of your studies because I think that we uh, that uh, representing you to our uh, listeners is appropriate thing to do. I know you've uh, I know that you've finished your studies back in back in the US. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah. So I finished the first part of my studies. I did my bachelor's. I studied at a school called West Virginia Wesleyan College. It was a small school, and I did a bachelor's of science in biochemistry. I did a bachelor's of arts in clinical psychology. That sounds you you sound pretty smart. <laughs> so what what are your plans when you come back? So when I get back to the U.S., I'm actually going to continue my studies. I'm going for a medical doctorate degree. So the minute I get back in August, I'll start medical school. I'll be there for four more years. Hopefully, I pass and get through just fine, and then I have two more years of working as a resident and then I'll be a doctor. So the sky is the limit, you say? Yeah, hopefully. Right. Uh, you work as a teacher's assistant, so I think that you have a great opportunity to compare secondary st students here at our school and in the US. What do you say? Uh, the school system is very different from what it is in the US. Uh, the students are equally adept and they're doing good work, but the way classes are set up is very, very different. So I find the Czech system to be less of my liking than the US system and I think a lot of my students might do better if they were put in a US educational system rather than what they have here. But it is what it is. Yeah, no, we have to live with that. Uh, maybe we can ask you some questions about uh, our cultural differences because I think that's the most imp uh, interesting uh, topic that we can talk about. Let me ask you about cultural differences a bit. Uh, you've spent over nine months in our country. I guess enough time to get to know people in some level. So what do you say? Uh, the cultural differences are not so huge, but I actually really respect the main differences there are. The first one, and the one that I find the biggest presence, is getting to know people for the very first time. So in Czech language, when you meet somebody, you say, Dobry den. Mm -hmm. You don't just instantly start with ahoy, because that's once you reach a familiar level. Getting to know people in the Czech Republic is an interesting process. You start out, you know, feeling things out, you wait till you actually like them, and then you like start a friendship after that, and it becomes something that's much more meaningful. In the US, it's very easy to be friends with people at the start. Everybody's very nice, they're very personable, but sometimes you find out later, maybe like a month or two later, they weren't exactly your first choice of a friend and it makes things a little bit awkward. So the process of getting to know people is a lot more meaningful and important to me in the Czech Republic than it is in the US. Will you really try this technique in the US when you come back? Uh, yeah, I think where I come from, at least in West Virginia, people are a little bit more sincere because they don't have time to waste with people they don't like. Oh. But for bigger city people, I've realized people in my program as well, coming from bigger cities and bigger states, definitely if I leave West Virginia, I'm going to try to be more cautious with getting to know people. All right. That's some good, good advice. What strikes you most as a cultural difference? What shocked you? What, sh what shocked you the most? Uh, like I said, getting to know people was one big thing, but also when it comes to going into houses, uh, the shoes, as weird <laughs> as that sounds. Uh, in the U.S., especially when you go to school, you don't have to switch shoes. You know, you just walk in with your shoes outside, they can even be muddy, which isn't good. <laughs> but, here in the Czech Republic, people are very, um, they take cleanliness to the next level, and I can really respect that. It's a good difference. Well, it's one of our, one of our few good, like, properties. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what are our nations same in? Are uh, there th uh, things we share? Mm. I mean, you've talked about it uh, uh, like in these past questions, but is, is there another thing that you might add? add? Yeah. Um, at least from where I come from in the US, West Virginia, the thing that I think is most similar between people in the Czech Republic and my state is that people are, once you become friends with them, I have to start with that, once you become friends with somebody, they're very willing to give you everything they have and to be like super 
respectable to you and just kind. For example, uh, to receive gifts in the Czech Republic, it's something very meaningful. Because a lot of the gifts that people give aren't just something that like, oh, they bought this this store and they spent whatever money on it. It's like they either really thought about the gift or they gave you something homemade that their family made or that they made themselves personal. And that's something that some people back home try to do at my state. And it's a very welcoming feeling. Like you feel like you're getting pulled into like a family. Well, that's a really good answer. Um, speaking about Czech habits or culture, what would you change or don't like much hmm. if there is any? Uh, <laughs> not a big cultural thing, but one thing that I would say, uh, the food's good here, but I wish there was more fruit. Like, yeah. I know that a lot of times, I, I mean, I buy my own groceries and I cook my own dinner, but I'm somebody that really likes des like uh, a good piece of fruit, even for a dessert. I know here, most of the time, if I go out to eat, they don't have that. No. So like, there's not that freshness that comes with the meal or like something, something citrusy or tropical. So that's one thing I would change. Speaking of food, do uh, do, uh, uh, mi do you miss the fa fast food uh, buildings in your country? Did, uh, did I've heard that you're so used to. Yeah, um, I don't really miss any of them in particular. There's only one place that I miss a little bit. It's Taco Bell. Yeah, Taco Bell. So oddly enough, Taco Bell, it's very cheap uh, if you're there for happy hour, which is just a special hour where they sell burritos for one dollar. It's like almost the same size as a kebab, but much, much cheaper. And it has a lot of meat in it. So if I'm really hungry or bored one day after working a lot, I'll just take like two or three of those. <laughs> and it's just the cheapness and the quickness of it is what I miss. Not really the, the food itself. Right. You seem like a very optimistic person. Are all Americans that optimistic? If yes, what makes you what makes them to be like that? that that's a good <laughs> question. So when we were first signing up for this program, it was something that they had told us about as well. When we were coming to the Czech Republic, um, everybody they're like, okay, as Americans, you're generally going to be more optimistic. And it's not something that I guess when you live in the country you realize or you know, because everybody's kind of acting the same way. Uh, since I've been here, I realize I'm a little bit more optimistic, but I don't know why we're like that in America. I think, at least for when I was growing up, my parents always taught me to be very thankful for what I have. And the fact is that a lot of places that you go in the world, like you realize it could be much, much worse than what we have. So even if something is small, if, like there's a small problem, you try to get past it as quick as possible because you realize in the large scheme of things in your life, it doesn't mean that much. Yeah. That's very wise. We checks yeah, yeah, then we checks tend to be more pessim pessimistic. Do do you see us that way? Uh sometimes. There's definitely some days where I listen to certain Czech outlooks on the view of the world or other things and I'm like, ah, that doesn't sound the best. But I think it's just the cautiousness that you guys use. Like I said, when you meet people for the very first time, you're it's not that you're not trusting, but you really take your time to really think about the information and see if it's actually worth it. I think it's the same way that you handle world situations and your view on the world. You like to think about it beforehand and not get too excited, especially if it's going to be something that's going to eventually let you down. Yeah. All right. Uh, th thank you for for these answers. And for the last segment, we would like to talk about future a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think you got from this experience, as of in Czech Republic, of course? So, getting to know and meet new people from a culture a lot different from my own is a very important thing. Um, making the contacts and building a friendship that's going to last for a long time in the future. It's really good for me because I, I truly feel like at least the city of Oreski Brod is a second home. And it's funny because like since I've been traveling this year, I've left the country a couple of times. Every time I come back and I get to Prague, it's like that feeling of like, oh man, like I'm finally relaxed. I could actually be at ease and I know what's going on. So in the future, always being able to come back somewhere in Europe and being like, okay, I have a home here. That's a good feeling to have. So that's important. That's a really sweet of you. I think every every Czech likes to hear that. Yeah. Um, you'll be leaving after four months. What will be the first thing you do after you come back home? Oh, 
That's a tough question. I haven't really thought of that. Uh, don't, don't, don't take too much pressure. Just go to Taco Bell. Yeah. So I'll probably either do food as like the very first thing. Um, I might go to visit a special location or something else like that. And I can't think. Probably food. I think food is the most important. I'll invite a lot of people. We'll go to a very nice place to eat. Maybe Kegler's. If it's a Wednesday night, it's all you could eat ribs for only like $15. It's pretty good. All right. I'm very curious about uh, some certain, certain question. If would you like to live in Czechia, if there would be some uh, special day with, uh, where you wouldn't be like, hey, I would like to move out into the next country. Uh, if it would be the Czechia, where would you, uh, if, if you could choose, where would you live? Where, where would I live? Um, at this very time, it'd obviously be more in the South Moravian region because it's what I'm most familiar with. Um, I really like the culture here. It's a lot more fun when you go to events. People are very personable and open. And I'm somebody that, especially where I come from, I'm not from a big city. So if I went somewhere like Prague or Brno, it'd be too much for me. I couldn't handle that. So I'd like to live somewhere close to here.